Hello, in this video I'm going to cover all the screens in the company results uh, section of Markstrat. So there are six different screens here you can click on. So each of these squares is an actually a button or a link. And each of these give you specific information about your particular team. So please reference this video if you're unsure about which screen uh, has which information. Okay, so the first one is called Company Dashboard. Um, here you have just basically some very simple overhead uh, information about your company. You know, what your, what your stock price is, how it's progressed, same thing for revenue and earnings, and then market share as well, and, and even brand revenues and contributions. So in terms of what sort of a information is most pertinent to making decisions, this probably isn't going to really help you. I mean, it's good historical information, but it doesn't really tell you much to help you determine, um, you know, what to do in different segments with different brands. So uh, don't focus on this one too much. Okay, financial reports. This gives you dollars and cents, basically, how you have done uh, from a financial standpoint. And as you go through the periods, you will see um, that... Uh, uh, the, the, the more and more columns will be added. So this is as of period one. So um, just gives you that information. Okay. Um, so it gives you, you know, your revenues and then all, all, all the individual costs, variable costs like cost of goods sold, um, inventory costs, and then also fixed costs like advertising, uh, commercial team, uh, research studies, things like that. Okay. So uh, one thing that's important to understand is contribution. So this basically is just price minus variable costs times the number of units sold. Okay, so how, basically how much money have you made or how much profit have you made per unit in this particular period? In this particular period, they made $18.5 million. So brand contribution, same thing here. I just, I just mentioned it, but this breaks it down uh, into... Um, breaks it down into uh, the specific brands. So this particular company is S. They've got Soft and Solo. Contribution before marketing for Soft was 11, 11 million. For Solo was 7 million. Uh, you add those together, it should roughly be this number right there. Okay, so you can see where that comes from. Okay. You also commit um, marketing resources specifically to each brand. And so you will find those here. This is a fixed cost towards soft. This is a fixed cost to solo and so on and so on. And so down here, contribution after margin or after marketing is the you know, total amount of money that you made uh, for these two brands, okay? So we call it contribution because you know, how much does the brand contribute to the company's bottom line basically, okay? Um, Figures there don't mean a whole lot. Uh, these numbers here uh, can help you a good bit. Uh, don't necessarily have to. Brand prices, this is very important information. It tells you uh, basically what the recommended retail, retail price was. This is the price that you entered. Average retail price is the price um, um, that the product was offered for on average across the different channels. And the selling price is basically the, the average price you made per unit sold across each of those three channels. Because remember, you're selling to retailers. You're not selling to um, the end users. And so the retailers can sell it for what they want, and you get a certain percentage of their retail price. Okay? Um, if, if you had made some, taken out a loan at some point, uh, you will see information there uh, regarding that. Okay, production reports, very, I will even say vitally important. Um, it's, it's very important that you have a good handle on the demand for your product so you can, uh, you know, offer the number of units appropriately. Okay, and so here you can see these two brands. Soft, you ended up with inventory of zero. Solo, you ended up with inventory of 27,000. Neither of these are ideal. So 27,000 units sold, uh, left over is going to incur some significant inventory holding costs. You can see here it was $197,000 specifically. 
um, soft, basically they ran out. So if you if you truly run out of a product, there'll be a note up here in red that says you didn't produce enough. You ended up not uh, meeting all demand. Okay, this is this is a, probably a worse situation because um, you know if if customers are not able to find your brand, they're going to go and buy the competitor's brand. So it's a lost sale. It's a lost bit of market share that you're basically taking from uh, your competitors. Okay, so you want to have a good uh, a good handle on that. So uh, the beauty of production in Mark Strata is there is a a twenty percent plus or minus adjustment that can be made. Uh, read more about that in the handbook. We're not going to talk about that here, but that will help you. Okay, so here, uh, 100,000 were ordered. The demand was 120,000. So uh, the, the simulation was able to adjust up to that number, but that's kind of the limit. If So we don't know exactly what the actual demand would have been if you had, you know, an unlimited number of units. Okay. And this is just financial information related to, to the two different brands, okay? All right, R&D report. This just basically tells you what R&D projects you have at your disposal right now, okay? So if you wanted to create a new brand, you would have to base it on Project Soft or Project Solo, which are the default projects that come when you start the simulation that correspond to your default brand, soft and solo. Um, if you had a project that you had already uh, ordered and, and had been completed, you would see it up here. Okay, if you put together a project but didn't have enough mon money to commit to it and you committed to it, say, 50% of the total cost of that project, you would see it listed here as, as partially uh, developed and and thus not ready to be used to to create a new brand or modify an existing brand. Sales projects just means here that um, you started a project, didn't finish it, and halfway through the the process you decide to shelve it, which just meant kind of put it on the on the back burner. Uh, I don't recommend that ever happening, but it certainly can sometimes. It would show up there if you had done that. All right, past decisions. This just basically summarizes what you've done in the past, um, and you can toggle between different periods. You know, once we get into period three, four, five, six, seven, you can look back at any of the periods before that. Um, if you enter the votites market, there will be votite information here um, as well. Okay. All right, and finally, feedback from your coach. This one's going to be your friends, but also. Uh, frustrating, so the, the simulation will give you tips, will give you information, give you things to think about and things to work on that will help you kind of, you know, do what you need to do. So it's it's certainly nice in that it tells you what to do, uh, but it's it's not nice in the fact that sometimes, for whatever reason, it kind of contradicts itself. And some things, you know, that it says you might not, not actually find as being true. I don't know why that is. But that is um, that's just the way it is. But but definitely use it. Um, I wouldn't just automatically take their you know take their uh, their comments as gospel and go for it. I would verify it with your own research uh, within the simulation. Uh, but but it should be pretty helpful. Okay, help you kind of pare down the information that you're you need to be using. Okay. That's all I'm going to say in this video. In other videos, I'll, we'll, I'll go through market competitive news, market research, um, the tools we don't really focus on, so I won't really talk about the tools, and definitely we'll go through all the different decide screens. Okay? That's all I've got. Thanks.